Let's talk through the differences in small mammals for a moment. I first want to draw your attention to um, this tab on D2L, Helpful Animal ID Resources. If you haven't checked that out, uh, you should. <laughs> Here's links to your Quizlets. And down here we have a lot of um, random things that I find online that might be helpful. And if you go to this Nine Natives um, PDF, it's something that Parks and Wildlife put out a long time ago when they were Division of Wildlife. Um, but it's really a good overview of the importance of our small mammals and the differences between um, these different types of small mammals. So go ahead and read through that because it provides a lot of really good information about um, our small mammals and native versus non-native and then how to tell the different kinds of animals apart. But I also would like to um, go over with you um, are some specifically how to tell the difference between some small mammals. So let me just pull that up for you here. Um, as we've talked about in class, Colorado is home to a lot of small mammals. Um, and partly because our, we have so many different ecosystem types. And this front range of Colorado is really along an ecotone that provides um, um, combination of the short grass prairie coming in, in into the montane foothills area too. So we do get a higher density of um, small mammals or higher species richness I actually should say along the front range. Um, but they're not all the same, right? They're not all mice. They're not even all rodents. So let's start with that idea of um, what is the classification of these small mammals. So we have to go all the way back up to our class mammalia to get um, to where they're all in one group. So in the class mammalia, we have our order Rodentia. And in Rodentia, that's where we tend to think of most of these mammals falling, but they're not all in this order. Um, we also have another order that we'll talk about here in a minute. But in Rodentia, we do have the family Geomyidae, that's your pocket gophers. We have family Dipodidae, that's your jumping mice, like the Preble's Meadow jumping mice, um, kangaroo rats, things like that. And then we have Crichetidae, which is a huge group, actually, and it's broken down into a couple of subfamilies, which I'm not going to get into right now. But basically, you have your um, meadow mice, your muskrats, and your voles in one subfamily, and then your harvest mice, your deer mice, and your wood rats in another subfamily. Um, also in Rodentia, I didn't put it on this screen, but would, that would be your also your home for Sciuridae or all of your squirrels, which we will talk a little bit about in this PowerPoint. Okay, the other really small mammals that um, are not in the order Rodentia are in Sericomorpha or Sericomorpha, however you want to say it. That's your family Sericidae, that's your shrews, and your family Talpidae, which is your moles. Okay, so what I find is that students really get confused between mice, gophers, shrews, moles, and voles. So we're going to go through all of that. But it's important before we do that that um, these animals that I've listed here are all natives. Now we do have a few invaders in the Rodentia um, order as well. So let's talk for a moment about native or non-native. So our native um, ro rodents all have hairy tails and they all have two color tones. So right here we have a little deer mouse um, and then over here we have our wood rat. All right, nice cute big ears for the wood rat. Our non-natives are our house mouse, um, long hairless tail, and our uh, Norwegian rat. Um, when you think of a rat, you probably think of this guy, but we have a lot of native rats too, and they're, um, they're not all bad. And one thing to point out is that most of our disease problems are due to these non-natives. Um, the, the Norwegian rat, uh, Rattus norvegicus, which I think is a fun scientific name to say, he was really responsible for the spread of the Black Plague and the Black Death, although all rodents can carry the fleas that carry plague. But um, our, our Norway rat is global. It's a human com um, um, commensalist with, with humans, so it will be anywhere humans are. 
Um, okay, so moving on. So we are not really going to focus on these guys. They're not on your list, and we're not thinking about them. So let's focus on these natives. So the first thing to talk about is, are you looking at a vole or are you looking at a mouse? Now, mice have rounded ears, um, kind of separate from their body. You can actually see them. They stand out. They tend to have a head that is somewhat defined as well, fairly pointed nose, and um, a fairly long tail, although tail length will depend on the species. Now, voles, on the other hand, they have kind of an undefined head. So they're just kind of this, like, I don't know, a little bit of a blob, right? Like their head and their body all joins together. Very small ears that sometimes you can't even really make out. Um, the ears kind of blend in with the body. Um, and a more rounded nose versus the pointed nose on the mouth, on the mouse. Um, typically our voles are darker and typically they have a shorter tail. So it's hard to see in this picture, but the tail is maybe an inch. Whereas with mice, you're going to have longer tails. Now, um, sign with voles, voles tend to scurry right under the surface. And, um, during snowy months, that's right under the surf, the surface of the snow. And you'll find these little trails that voles leave, um, under the snow when it melts and you'll see all their tunnel system. And that is kind of like a, a, a highway system for small mammals in that subnivian environment. Okay, what about moles or voles? Um, a mole has small ears, like almost undefined, um, an extremely pointed nose. And remember, our moles are not even rodents, right? They're not rodents, they're insectivores. So you have this snout almost, I think about it as for slurping up insects. All right, um, moles are fossorial, so they have these massive paws used for, and claws used for digging. Um, rudimentary, um, sometimes non-functional eyes even. Um, they're used to that fossorial lifestyle much more than the voles and mice who come above ground quite often. Um, voles though, um, back to voles, are mostly herbivorous, not insectivorous. And they can have huge swings in their populations. They'll peak every two or three years. They spend their time in runways and burrows, often time between the soil and vegetation, as I mentioned. The sagebrush bowl on your list is associated with specifically sagebrush areas, so they're obligate to sagebrush habitat. They have longer hair, a shorter tail, and small ears, and are buff gray to gray. Um, and the voles are in the same subfamily as the muskrats. And that subfamily, if you care, is the Arviculinae, um, a little bit um, in a different group than your harvest mice on your list. Here's a picture of a deer mouse, um, probably the most common of all of the mice species. And then harvest mouse would probably be second. But you can see that long tail, distinct ears, nice long pointy nose, bigger eyes. Um, honestly, I think they're kind of cute. I think of Cinderella and all the little mice um, in that story. Uh, you don't see moles or voles showing up on Disney movies very often. All right, um, gopher, gopher or mole. Um, gophers are um, herbivorous. Moles are insectivorous. Gophers are in your rodent um, family. Moles are in that Sericomorpha family. So um, both of them, though, can leave these mounds on the surface. They are both fossorial, and they can be massive pests um, in grassland areas and in lawns, and um, exterminators are called in oftentimes to remove these because of the um, hassles that they cause for people. Pocket gophers um, have long claws and forelimbs, small eyes, sturdy skulls, small ears, and short fur. But they don't have these paddles um, like the moles did. And they have that external lined cheek pouch like we see um, when we're looking at the specimens at CSU. And they shove all their little seeds and vegetation materials in those external lined cheek pouches. It's important to recognize that um, the Heteromyidae family also has that. That's your pocket mice and your kangaroo rats. They have those external lined cheek pouches as well. Um, pocket gophers are active all year round. They don't hibernate. They don't go into torpor. Um, they produce mounds of soil near the burrow systems. They are not gregarious. They don't hang out with others in their group. And they are strongly territorial. 
Um, and you can see here that gopher mound that has more dirt on one side and then the center is off to the side. The mole mound is more um, symmetrical with the hole right in the center. Um, both gophers and, um, or I should say gophers especially, are considered ecosystem engineers because their activities strongly influence the availability of resources for other species. Your northern pocket gopher, um, the color is going to vary geographically. There's actually at least nine subspecies of pocket gophers in Colorado. Um, and so you're going to have some variations in colors from um, dark brown or yellow brown to pale and grayish yellow. Um, they occur above 5,000 feet. Um, and so you're not going to see these out in the eastern plains too far. They form casks or eskers on the surface um, that are fairly conspicuous earthen ridges um, kind of tunneling around. Okay, pocket gopher or ground squirrel. Well, I sure hope that that's um, not, I, I don't think that you could get too confused on this, but we'll talk about them. Both of them are fossorial, right? So both of them are gonna have long claws for digging. Um, but your ground squirrels are typically going to be much larger bodied. Um, you're going to see them more standing up, sitting up, looking around like this. You won't see your pocket gopher sitting up on its haunches like that. It's going to be much more fossorial than your ground squirrel, not popping out as much. And most of your ground squirrels either hibernate or go into torpor. And you only had a couple of ground squirrels on your list, but it's important to know that there's a really big group of ground squirrels. And you will still see holes and mounds. They're going to be bigger than your gophers. Uh, the mounds and the holes are going to be bigger than your gopher holes too. Okay, ground squirrel or chipmunk. Remember we talked about this in class. Your chipmunks all have stripes along their face that extends on up through their nose. And your ground squirrels do not. Um, your chipmunks are going to live in your denser forest while ground squirrels prefer more open areas. So that's one difference between like the least chipmunk and the golden mantled ground squirrel, which both might be geographically in the same area, but their niches are going to be slightly different because the least chipmunk will be more in your wooded areas and your um, golden mantled ground squirrel will be more in the open meadowy areas. And they'll both be begging for food at the pullouts in Rocky Mountain National Park, so you won't be able to tell them apart there so much, except by what they look like. Um, no ground squirrels have stripes on their head. So if it doesn't have a stripe on its head, it is not a chipmunk. Um, I'm sorry, if it does have a stripe on its head, it's not a chipmunk. Um, ground squirrels run with their tail straight out and chipmunks hold it up. So you can kind of tell as they're dashing across um, a meadow what it might be. The least chipmunk is the smallest chipmunk in Colorado. It has five pale dorsal stripes and two, um, two pale stripes on the face. The range is from the foothills west up into um, Colorado above tree line. It is a diurnal species and it goes dormant during the winter. The golden mantle ground squirrel, however, gets confused often with chipmunks, um, but remember no stripes on its face. And it also has a white eye ring that goes all the way around the eye. Um, golden mantle ground squirrel prefers open woodlands and shrublands over the dense forest and it likes sunlight instead of shade. And the Wyoming ground squirrel also on your list is a medium sized um, ground squirrel, fairly long tail, kind of a drab color, a little bit, looks a little bit like a prairie dog, but it is smaller than a prairie dog and it has a longer tail than a prairie dog. And you're not going to find it in these communal groups as you would with prairie dogs. Okay, chipmunks or wood rats. Um, I don't think they really look all that much the same. I think your wood rat looks like a mouse on steroids with really big, big ears and a pretty long tail. Um, we have a few different species of wood rats. Only one on your list is the bushy-tailed wood rat. Another really common one around here is the eastern wood rat that does extend up into our foothills. So there is some range overlap between the eastern wood rat and the bushy-tailed wood rat. And um, I think that pretty much wraps it up. But don't forget about all of the ecological services that these small mammals provide. Um, you know, they get, they get, uh, they get, I don't know, uh, what's the right word? Um, they get a bad rap when they really are providing a lot 
of ecological services, namely being the base of our food web, but seed dispersal, managing vegetation, nutrient cycling, aerating our soils, allowing water to infiltrate our soils, um, 